Hi, it's Dr. Luo here. I'm one of the pain management doctors in San Antonio, Texas. So today we're talking about facet arthropathy. Now there are a couple of names that can be associated with facet arthropathy. Number one, you can call it facet joint arthropathy. This is also known as lumbar spondylosis and people can even put it under the umbrella of degenerative disease disease. So what is actually degenerating? Well, nothing really. What they mean is actually that you have little joints with arthritis in the back. We'll be going over one of the more common procedure that we perform to diagnose and to see if that would help with some of the pain related to facet arthropathy. So what we're talking about is medial branch block and radial frequency ablation. So typically this is a block that is done to diagnose to see if there's any pain coming from the facet arthropathy. And so the procedure is done in a three-step fashion. So the first two steps are medial branch blocks. So this is a reversible block that we temporarily numb up the little nerves that go to the joint, see if that's helpful. So the medication that we use is actually bupivacaine, so it only lasts about 8 to 12 hours. Now the sequence is typically we do one medial branch block, we temporarily block it for about 10 to 12 hours, and then we do a second medial branch block two weeks later and we temporarily block it for about 10 to 12 hours and then we do what's called the radial frequency ablation. This procedure is performed with you lying on your stomach. Um, you'll likely be offered an IV sedation to keep you more relaxed but awake during the procedure. A local anesthetic will be used to numb the injection site. Using x-ray guidance, a needle with an electrode at the tip is placed along the small nerves of the facet joint. For the medial branch block, a local anesthesia will be injected here. Commonly, we use bupivacaine and is only meant to last about 8 to 12 hours. And the next day, you'll record your pain level and do some of the movement that typically causes pain and see if that's helpful. So the second medial branch block at our clinic, we do exactly the same. If these both are helpful, then we do the radial frequency ablation in the same area. With that, a mild electrical current is used to simulate the nerve and confirm the exact location. You may feel thumping or muscle contraction during this part of the procedure as demonstrated as below. Now, you should not feel any thumping or muscle contraction in the lower extremity past the knee. The electrodes are heated up to 80 degrees Celsius for 90 seconds at each location. After that, the nerve then is deactivated. This whole procedure takes about 20 to 30 minutes depending on how many levels are done. After the procedure, you will be asked to stay in the recovery area for observation for a short period of time. Since we're using needles in your back, anytime we introduce the foreign object in the back, there's potential risk of pain, bleeding, and infection. After the radial frequency ablation, one of the most common things that patients experience is this post-procedure neuritis. So what that is, is that as the nerves are deactivated away, it gets a little bit more painful. This is not unusual. A week or two after the procedure, ice pack and heat bag would be very helpful and sometimes people take some over-the-counter medication and rarely do we prescribe some pain medication to help you combat that post-procedure neuritis. Your nerves are pretty resilient, so they typically grow back at a very, very slow pace. After the radial frequency ablation, the pain relief lasts about six, nine to nine months at a time. And typically, we can do the same procedure and regular result follows. Now, if you're not getting any pain relief with these medial branch blocks, I would not proceed with the radial frequency ablation because it's unlikely that this radial frequency ablation will help with the lower back pain that you have we were more likely to look into other sources of the lower back pain. So if you are getting sedation, make sure you fast at least six hours. Please advise your physician if you're taking any a blood thinner, other medications such as your blood pressure, seizure medication, and thyroid medication, and go ahead and continue taking those with a small sip of water. Hopefully that's all the questions you have. If you have additional questions, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll get to it as best as I can.